Welcome to Whisperwood Stories. Happy Halloween! Sorry, I won't do that again. Let's instead continue to today's story. I hope you're enjoying it so far. If you are, be sure to let me know. Let's begin. The Ghost Wrangler Finale We rode throughout the day, away from Stockton and towards our destination. Perhaps our last destination. The swampland seemed to crawl up from the horizon as the sky grew darker. I could tell that Mavy was nervous. I was too. I didn't know how strong Archivelix was, or even how strong Xander was now. It seemed like I was stepping into a bear trap no matter what. The road followed the edge of the swamplands east, then angled closer until we were in them. I opted to walk the horse through this perilous mud. That black horse, the one we were given by Michael, did indeed remind me of my own. It felt like riding a phantom of the past, like her spirit had come back for one last midnight ride. Arrive at midnight, we did. My oil lantern tried to cut through the fog. Frogs chirped and cranes cawed. Bubbles burst in the nearby lake beds as silhouettes of gators floated by. I tried to keep a brave face on for the kid but I was feeling the pressure. Running head first into a demon nest at a crossroads of all places. This would not be pretty, no matter how it turned out. The rusty spoon soon came into view. The crossroads were right beside it. The saloon itself was a decrepit little building. It seemed long gone despite only closing a year ago choking vines, rotten boards, and spotted metal. It was two stories, and it seemed several eyes watched us from its windows. That place feels like a shell. It's filled with estranged thoughts. Maybe said. Can you feel something? Yeah, but it's hard to tell if it's coming from the roads or the saloon. Voices, Mr. Ryder. Some are warning us to turn back. I glanced at the saloon. Whatever traumatic event had closed that place was likely enough to form poltergeists. That was probably what attracted her to this place originally. Stay close, I said. The crossroads had its own aura. A single road sign stood in the corner of the paths, bent, pointing to lost places. Moonlight shone on the ground through cloudy beams and scattered leaves. The stretch of rivers curled with the breeze, reflecting the abandoned saloon like pooled rainwater at a gravestone. My boots disturbed light mist at our feet. Cloistering, paranormal sensation was strong, real strong. If I hadn't trained to resist these repulsive spells, I might have vomited and left at once. Maybe didn't seem to be doing much better. No wonder no one dared to come here. I checked my weapon. Fully loaded. Maybe grabbed the bag with the lead chains and slung it over their shoulder. This is your last chance, kid. You might want to stay here with the horse instead. This could get dangerous. I said solemnly. Maybe shook their head. I'm your apprentice. I stick by your side. I nodded. It was honestly a relief. Stepping towards the road felt like hovering my foot above a gator's jaws, but I carried on. We soon stood in the very center of the four paths. Well, why don't you come on out, Archivelix? We don't have all night. 
There's a pale moon out and I'm ready to dance. Silence. An unyielding quiet like that of a church graveyard. I was afraid to spot my frowning visage. I would never admit that demons had been my fear ever since my brother had died. Ever since he had been killed by Xander. I suppose bravery is doing it anyway, whether you're afraid or not. My, my. Are those ghastly silver bullets for me? You shouldn't have. A voice as silken as liquid mercury, poisonous as a tube, sharp like a knife in velvet. I looked around frantically. I might have sworn I saw a silhouette here. A slight shimmer there, until something finally stepped out of the fog. A feminine figure in a gown of white and gold. Red nails reflecting the moon like dried blood. Long hair of black, liquid onyx poured over marble. Archaeovelix. I've been waiting to finally meet you, she said. I've heard so much about your little ghost wrangler crew. What can I help you with? I stepped towards her. My eyes darted around me as she disappeared. A small chuckle echoed from here and there. I turned and heard a whisper close to my ear. Do you really think such chains could bind me? I batted my hand towards the whisper, but all I met was a disembodied fog. Another little laugh. A demon of illusion, was it? Stop hiding and come find out, I called. Maybe hugged close. What do you sense, Maybe? She's here. She's afraid, but... Maybe gold. So am I. I lifted my revolver in my right hand and gestured protectively with my left. Come out and face us already. Enough games. Only if we can agree on terms. Everywhere. Nowhere. Terms like what? Keep those shackles and gun holstered, cowboy. And let's just talk. Just for a time. If you don't like what I have to say, well, you're welcome to play with your little toy. I have something you'll want to hear. I snarled. Talking was a demon's strong point, the exact position you didn't want to find yourself in. If I wasn't careful, this could go very poorly, which meant even poor consequences for the other wranglers. Maybe I was simply desperate. That's likely why I did it. Fine. I agree. For now. I said and holstered my gun. A moment of quiet passed. The mist seemed to rise to a heavy fog, and Archivelix walked out from it. We stood underneath the moonlight, now in the center of the crossroads. I stared at her inhuman eyes, pupilless and black. Her smile was like a shark's. I'm glad we can still come together in these times of strife, she said. Clock's ticking, I growled. Archivelix made a mock and frown. So gruff and serious all the time. Can't you allow yourself to have a little fun? Just a little like the fun you have torturing innocents, I snapped. Archivelix rolled her eyes. Come now. It's not as if my nest kills without order. If we did, it would be like the old times. We would hunt us in droves, and we'd be forced to kill you all. We just starve ourselves that way. Better to nibble the occasional fruit than kill the tree. Since you're just no fun, however, I'll cut to the chase. I know why you're here. That little bitch Sander wants me dead. 
and has made you my executioner? Did you even stop to think why that petulant old fool would want that? Demon politics are of little interest to me, I said. Oh, but there's your mistake. Our matters are your matters, as they determine the rate of cattle disappearances, of virgin sacrifices, of witches and warlocks running mad. She glided close. He wants me dead, because I am becoming stronger than him. He wants me dead because he once ruled in my place. I've put restrictions on him, you know, and his hunger is insatiable. Remember just a year ago, the year when you ran, someone had to stop his rampage. I said nothing. That is the year I took control from Xander. His little devils made nests and tormented nearby towns without order. But I scorched them all. All of his little devils. You see, I value you humans as the fruit you are. Let me guess. You want me to kill him instead? Archivelix tapped my nose. Before you shout curses and regurgitate ignorant refusal, let me show you something. There was a pulse in the air, a shifting like melting ice. That same leverage on my guts before the air was open again. It showed me a new place, an image of a different area. A cave of sorts, the rushing of a waterfall. I could guess what it was at once. I saw four figures bound up in chains, hanging over a nest of laughing devils. I knew them. Jane, Freddy, Mark, and Jesse. They were battered and bruised, but it was them, except it wasn't them. If I looked a little closer, I saw something more. Jane had yellow slitted eyes. Mark had a forked tongue. Jesse laughed with an inhuman cackle. Freddy had long claws. The implication was strong. So strong it almost made me sick. I could only just hold my composure. Especially once I saw the figure in a red vest. Xander, checking a pocket watch and staring up at the chained imposters. The portal closed. Your little wrangler friends, they're already dead. He is not bound by the expectation he cultivated in you, Archivillic said. You have no leverage on him. He will release your companions as he has said, but only their souls. Releasing them into hell to be fodder alongside your brother. You are already sealed to this wording. Now with us, he will kill his two worst enemies in one swoop, and it costs him nothing. Don't you see? I don't know who you're not lying to, I managed to say. Archivelic shrugged easily. Maybe you don't. After all, hell is made of lies and deceit. That is, however, when our best interests are in danger. Think about it. Really think about it. What reason would I have to spite you? Xander, however, has every reason. There's one way to prove it. I glanced at Mavy, who was uncharacteristically silent. I knelt down to the kid. I need you to do something brave. Can you read her mind? Is she telling the truth? Mavy's look was half fearless, half afraid. The kid nodded and stared at Archivillix. This seemed to catch her by surprise for a moment, as if she didn't understand. Soon, Mavy began to sweat. It was probably like the kid was sticking their hand into a fire. I could only imagine what the mind of a creature like this could feel like. Mavy blinked. The kid's focus fell and they seemed dizzy. Mavy, you alright? I said, 
When Maeve spoke, their voice was detached, slow. I... I think so. Mr. Ryder, she's telling the truth. Maeve said. If you're still unsure, we could always make a deal instead. I could tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. I'll swear it on a Bible. I made a deal with Xander already. I said distractedly, looking over the kid. They were just staring off. That doesn't matter, Archivillic said. If Xander dies, he can't exactly retaliate now, can he? Even our deals have loopholes. Maybe. You good? The kid shook their head as if to clear it, and seemed to come back to reality. Mr. Ratter? Where are we? We're in the swamps, talking to Archivelix. Right. Sorry, Mr. Ryder, sir. It's fine. You just sit here a minute. Glance from where we had come. I thought about the swarming law, all that I had lost, about the truth. Was she right? Was Xander just looking to strike two birds down? No matter how my deal with Xander went, he was on top. He got what he wanted no matter what. I hated to admit it, but I felt more and more that Archivelix was right. It was not an easy choice. Do Xander's poisonous bitten or be torn between two diabolical demon packs? Once Maeve seemed to settle, I stood and beheld Archivelix. Fine, let's make a new deal, she-demon. Archivelix smiled like a hyena and began laughing like one too. Very good. Why don't you stop then, cowboy? What would you like out of a deal with a little old me? It could be anything. Anything at all. Anything, I said. Anything, dear cowboy. Fine. You let me use a portal to reach Xander tonight. Tell me everything you can. You come with me, too. Help me kill them all. If I kill Xander, you... I paused. You bring my brother and the Wranglers back to life. You play nice, and we won't have to come after you next. How's that? Held out my hand. You kill Xander. And I can bring one person back to life. And you can't harm me during these terms. Besides, how would notice if so many souls were retethered at once? The wrong kind of attention might come hunting. Attention you wouldn't be able to handle. I thought for a moment. A long moment. It still hadn't quite hit me that the Wranglers were... Already dead, but I could hardly deny it. By playing it out like Archivelix said, Xander would have all of his worst enemies dead and buried. Realizing that, I feel like I knew who Carl would want me to bring back. Who all of them would. My brother. Archivelix reached up and took my hand. I felt another warm surge in my chest poison. Her eyes seemed to flash fire in turn. What was another link to hell carried on my shoulders? Pleasure doing business with you, Daryl. So, tell me what else you know. It's true. If you killed me, Xander would make you into a thrall. You're bound to him already, and in holding the souls of all of your little friends, you'd be helpless. Kill me, then try to kill him. That's what he really expects. That way he could kill you easily. Then you, I, and the last Wranglers are all dead. He'd have free reign on this land. Wouldn't he be breaking his end of the deal that way? Oh, he wouldn't be. 
He'd let them go, like he said. She leaned close. Just deeper into hell. Think of it as him holding their souls above a cavern. You should be more careful about how you word your deals. Archivalic smiled. What else? He's arrogant. He doesn't actually expect you to show up before the deal is done. We go through the portal, catch him by surprise. If we kill him before he can call a pack judge, that be best for all. A pack judge? Yes, greater demons from below who come to uphold packs. If he is unable to call one in time, if you kill him first, your deal will be mute. I felt something in my chest each time I made a deal. I knew somehow that if I broke it, I'd die. You very well might be right. She chuckled. But our deal will protect you for now. A greater demon may still come for you one day, so I'd sleep with one eye open if I were you. Curio John had been right. Things were dire indeed. It seemed that this would be the end of the line for me, whether tonight or tomorrow. I thought over my options. <laughs> what was I saying? I'd been backed into a corner. There was only one option now. Kill Xander and hope. Kill Xander, and my brother would be brought back. Kill Xander. Can you really bring my brother back? I said. Once Xander is dead, all souls he gathered will be free in hell. Free for me to swoop in and grasp. I'll take you to him afterwards. Fine. Let's go, then. Before you settle yourself to die, cowboy, I invite you to my saloon. A gift. One last drink before it's all over. What do you say? A glance to where Archivalix gestured. The rusty spoon. None of my minions will harm you. She continued. Go on. Have a drink. The portal can wait. I helped Mavie up, and the kid followed as I walked towards the decrepit building. One last break. One last drink. Didn't sound so bad. The steps creaked as I walked up to the porch. I felt those eyes watching me. Felt it stronger as we stepped inside. The place was just as rotten in as out. All but the bar. I saw a bottle of angry gems and watched as a glass was poured by a smiling archivalix. I sat at the bar and said nothing. She pushed the glass towards me and disappeared into smoke. That seemed to be her favorite trick. I sniffed at the glass and idly wondered if it was poisoned, but realized that worry was doubly pointless. If she killed me, I couldn't do her task. It was already poison besides. I nursed the drink. The building creaked around us in eyes and silhouettes watching. This was a nest, all right. I could feel the strange, almost muggy atmosphere. Distant sulfur stink was the real tell. Are you all right? I asked the kid. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Ryder, sir. I just had some kind of lapse there, almost like sleep, but, but I... Maybe trailed off. What is it? Maybe seemed to struggle to come up with words, but I somehow gathered the meaning. Worry. Hope. Fear. All wrapped into one. I know, kid. I know. We stood before too long, ready to get this done. I downed the rest of my drink. Let's go then, demon. Time to end this once and for all. I grabbed the bottle of angry gems and strode out of the saloon. Maybe followed in worry. Archivelix watched us approach, 
and opened another portal at the crossroads. I haven't fought for blood in quite some time. This'll be fine. Just don't go mess this up for me, I said, and readied my gun. With Mavy and Archivelix at my side, we stepped through the portal. No turning back. Felt like passing through water, boiling hot water, before we were thrown through the other side unceremoniously. The portal closed behind us. We now stood in that cave in Xander's nest. I saw what I had seen before. Four figures hung on the wall by devices. Four faces I ought to recognize. Liars and fakes. The one that looked like Jesse noticed me and called out. Took your sweet time, Daryl. Save it, I snapped. The jig is up. I know what you really are. You're devils. Fakes made by Xander to fool me. Don't listen to these demons, Daryl. Just get out of here. Mark's words were muffled as a devil swooped in and placed a hand over his mouth. I don't require comments from the peanut gallery, Xander said. Besides, seems it's too late anyway. Xander, standing at the base of the Wranglers, turned slowly. There was no sound but the crashing waterfall, no movement. Tell Xander threw a cigar to the ground and stumped it. He glanced at me, at Mavie, then at Archaeovelix herself. Charmed, Xander, she said. Well, well, well. I have to say that you are a little earlier than I expected, but that may be due to your means of transportation. Bully a portal out of her, did you? I can't help but notice her head isn't removed from her shoulders, though. Didn't you hear what I said, Xander? I know that these are just devils wearing skin. They ain't the real Wranglers. You tricked me in our deal. Xander raised an eyebrow. Is that so, dear Daryl? Xander glanced at my hand where my gun was ready. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it seems you've been fooled twice over. These are your friends, through and through. Would I lie to you in a deal, Daryl? I frowned. What do you mean? I can't quite think of how you managed it, Archivelix, but here you are. Care to explain yourself? Xander said. I don't need to explain myself to you. Enough lies, little Xander. We have come to kill you. Long claws grew from her hands like drawing knives. Last chance, dear Daryl. Kill her now, Xander said. Who was lying? Archivelix or Xander? What do we do? Maybe said in my mind. Stay back. Let me handle this. I stared at both demons with a snarl. Each just smiled politely, like butlers waiting for my food order. Everything Archivelix said had to be true, didn't it? We had made a deal for that very purpose. She gained nothing by lying to me. Nothing that I saw, at least. Sander had to be lying. Lying with one last attempt to try and get in my head. Make me hesitate. I stepped in front of Mavy. I've been waiting a long time for this. I said, This is for my brother. I pulled the trigger. I might not be the best shot. My aim this time was perfect. Still, my bullet somehow curved. It slowed as it approached Sander as if wind buffeted against him. He plucked it out of the air and inspected it, his fingers bubbling where his skin touched the silver. Cursed metal, Xander muttered and threw it. Threw it was perhaps an incorrect way to say it. He may as well have shot the bullet as if his hand was a gun. It soared through the air at a 
deafening speed. I only just had the instinct to duck, but I wasn't the target. The bullets sunk into Archivelix's arm, who hissed and growled. Seems the deal has been broken. Kill them. All of them. Call the pack judge at once, Xander said. Devils rushed up to the Wranglers. No! Maybe shouted, but it was too late. Swarm and devils were on them in no time. Throats slit, blood flowing. I wanted nothing more than to look away. But I couldn't. Slow death and silence met them. The bodies weren't shifting back. Weren't turning into devils. Real? Were they? There was no time to think. I shouted in anger and rushed at Xander. My gun fired once, twice, three times. Two fell in a similar curve, but one bullet slashed across his cheek and bubbled. I too have been looking forward to this day, Xander growled. It's just a shame you are such a fool. Xander's eyes glowed a bright red and his skin shifted. Long claws grew from his hands, horns sprouted from his head. He met my rush. Slashing at me left and right, I ducked just out of the way. Archivelix rushed away instead, holding off several devils at once as they charged. That at least will let me focus on Xander alone. I reached into my bag and gripped the silver mirror shards, placing them between my fingers and punching towards Xander's face. I felt that same odd slowing, but I tried to force through with all of my rage. The silver stuck slowly into his cheek and neck, bubbling black blood that hissed in contact with the silver. Xander's demonic features became even more prominent as he let out his own cry. You've been played like a fiddle, fool, Xander said, voice rumbling. Mr. Ratter, Maybe called, and I watched as a bundle of ghost sage flew over my head. It had been lit, causing acrid smoke to fill the area. The devil squealed, Xander and Archivelix coughing heavily. You dare come into my home and desecrate with such foul weapons? This will end here! Xander dashed towards Maybe with rage. I ran after him, trying to reach the kid as chaos reigned around us. There was no way I could get there. Xander was too fast. He would reach the kid before I could. Maybe only stared. Kid, look out! I called, but Xander gained a hold on the kid. A single claw hovered at their throat. Everyone stop this instant, Xander said. I stopped running. Archivelix threw the corpse of a devil to the ground. All of us looked at Xander. It's a shame, real shame it had to come to this, Daryl. You could have had it all. We could have all gone our separate ways and kept the balance, but you, you just couldn't get over your damn fool pride, could you? Maybe strained in the demon's grip. I inched closer. Nuh-uh, you stay right there. A trickle of blood ran down Maybe's neck. Let the kid go. Maybe isn't a part of this, I said. <laughs> Not a part of this, Xander scoffed. You brought them in, so you have set their fight. Just remember that when you're dead and I'm free. Just remember how many deaths you've caused, dear Dell. Remember most of all that I'll see you and... Xander paused. I heard a clink of metal, then saw something. Black chains floating, unassisted by a hand. I smiled. The dark chains wrapped around Xander like striking serpents. Xander cried out in anger, a sound that fell to nothing as he shriveled. His power drained away. The cave no longer felt sinister, and even the smell of sulfur faded somewhat. To see him so powerless, 
I should have felt some pleasure. I walked up to Xander as he fell to a knee. Archivelix floated down from above to stand with us. He hardly seemed intimidating now. Did you have to light that awful sage? Archivelix whined. I ignored her. Well done, maybe. Seems this bastard ain't half as clever as he seems. Xander laughed. <laughs> Label me as the fool, will you? You have lost, Daryl. I'm glad Curio John held on to these chains. It will give me the room to watch you squirm before you go. Curio John, is it? I should have known he was still writhing around. Xander glanced at Archivelix. You have a lot of reason to smile, don't you? You're the demon that won. Something in his tone put me off. What are you saying? Xander smiled at me. You're real slow, ain't you, Daryl? Why don't you go check on the Wranglers? They still haven't turned back into devils after all. I glanced at Darky Velix. Her face was stamped by inhuman glee. I rushed to the bodies of the Wranglers. Jane, Freddy, Mark, Jesse. Their blood was red. Eyes clouded. The same faces as ever, if aged. Human. The Wranglers were dead. I had been played. My face twitched with emotion as I stood. I walked to them. Now, now, Archivillic said. Attempt to harm me before our deal is done, and you'll be doubly over. Kill Xander first, then we can talk. Pulled out the silver stake, studying it, letting that numb feeling drag at my mind. Xander stared in fear, real fear. Even Archivellix's smile fell, her stance nervous as if ready to dart. For once, I had taken them by surprise. Those looks alone was almost worth it all, but not quite. Where did you get that? Archivellix said. Now wait just a minute, Xander stammered. I know that weapon. It can only be used once. Wouldn't you rather get back at her for tricking you, wouldn't you? My brow twitched inward with a snarl. Mr. Ratter, Maeve said. I cried out in rage, aimed my gun, and fired. Silver bullet planted in the center of Xander's forehead, skin bubbling and dark blood flowing. Xander's eyes drifted up to the wound in his skull. Then he fell backwards, silent, back in hell. Before I could move, though, a portal opened, and Archivellix darted through it. She gave me a final wink before disappearing behind it, except the portal didn't close. Come on, kid. Let's see this done. We're going after her. We rushed to the portal together. I took one last glance to Xander's nest, to the bodies of my companions, then left the carnage behind us. That pain was for another day. The portal closed as we entered, and left us in a different place, a place that was all too familiar. We stood on a hill that overlooked an old township, long ago burned to the ground. It was where my brother and I had first encountered devils. The hill here had a church and graveyard. It had been one of the few buildings that hadn't burned down. Preachers liked to sing about the miracle of its lone survival, but it was mute now. The whole thing was ablaze in a giant's bonfire. A burned church house. Where are we? Maybe asked distantly. Light rain hit in our face. Home. Holding my attention most was not the burning church, but the grave right in front of us. Archivellic stood before it too, smiling, sinister eyes absent of any soul. It seems our business has concluded, 
Well done, little lamb. I rushed up to her with the stake, but as I swung, I hit nothing. Only laughing and mist met my strike. What do you want? Why did you bring us here? You lied under the terms of our deal, I said. Lie? Little old me? Archivelix laughed. I want you. You should be more careful how you word your deals with demons. There was no term to tell the truth. I did tell you everything I could, and I knew exactly what you needed to hear to fulfill my purpose. I will find you. I will... Yes, yes. More of your manly bravado is not necessary. I've simply come to inform you that our deal is done as of... now. She snapped her fingers, and a green light rose around her. The grave at her back cracked open, and I could hear the whispers. Toodaloo now. Do yourself a favor and forget all all about me. Otherwise, I will have to kill you. In a blink of mist, she was gone. A hand, decayed and rotten, reached out of the gravestone. My eyes went wide as I beheld a half-sunken face, an eyeless gaze of a corpse one year buried. Horrified, melted distorted yet recognizable. My brother. Walker, I said. There was no reply, only a slough and squelch and grime as the monster stood. That greenish light held in the sockets where her eyes once were. The tongue lolled out like a dog's. Mr. Ryder, sir, he's... he's not alive. No thoughts, Maybe said. All I could do was stare. My face twitched from horror to anger to disgust and beyond. The kid was doing their best to be brave. There's no soul, but I can feel restlessness. Maybe whispered. If we don't put this body back, your brother's soul will be stuck, Mr. Ryder, sir. What do we do? I looked at my hand. I still held the silver stake, spotted by rust. One use only. Sever the soul of whatever it's driven through. My hands shook as I walked forward, water streaming down my face. With one last cry, I ran the stake through my brother's heart. A soft wheeze. An exhale. And the body fell backwards, back into the grave. I watched the body. That green light soon left the eyes, and the silver stake slowly crumbled into rust. At least now, my brother's soul would be free. We stood in silence. Only the church crackling behind us. Any peace I might have gained in the moment didn't last long. The sound of rumbling hooves, distant shouting, maybe rushed to the edge of the church fence. Mr. Ryder, there's lawmen out there. I fell to my knees. Get out of here, kid. Go. Get somewhere safe. Maybe stared in fear. What? Where would I go? I got nowhere. I glanced towards the burned out town. I could see the men on horseback, riding fast, coming towards the hill and burning church. That sheet him in it got me good. Hook, line, and sinker. I focused on Mavy. Listen to me. Go back to Curio John here. Don't look back. I'm sorry, Mr. Ryder. Archivelix must have tricked me. I, I thought she was telling the truth. I swear I didn't mean to. It's all right, maybe. Not your fault. 
none of it. You have to go back to Curio John. But I have to be your apprentice. Maybe stammered. I know, maybe. I know. And you are. You are my apprentice. Maybe not it. Go high, kid. Don't come out no matter what. Take my gun, our supplies, all of it, and go. Comprende? Maybe paused, seeming reluctant, but gathered the things I told them to and rushed off. I watched the kid go. I was left how I started. Weaponless, penniless. Yet the kid got away. That was different. Someone got away. Maybe it was safe. There were only moments left before the lawmen were here. My last free moments, perhaps. Archivelix and Xander both had played me like so many instruments. There was no turning back. Supposed there never had been any turning back. I glanced into my brother's open grave. If only I had more time, I'd seek out her nest wherever she ran and burn it to the ground. But it didn't matter. Without a weapon, without a penny, and without time. At least I had done some of what I meant to. Xander was dead. My brother's soul was at peace. I still got to see the other wranglers, other friends, if just for a moment. Kid would be in good hands with John. That, of all things, kept the terror at bay. The hooves thundered ever closer. I took a swig from the bottle of Angry Jim's and smoked a cigarette. I smiled. Maeve watched as several lawmen gathered at the grave their images warped by the dancing fires in the church. Eight lawmen in total. All of them had rifles pointed down at Mr. Ryder. A man with a golden badge stepped from his horse. Well, well. We come to see why this church was burning. I should have thought it'd be you, Daryl Quinton. You really slipped our grasp for a minute there, I have to admit. But when we heard the recent reports, we knew. So tell me, what exactly possessed you to come back to this state when you had... Spare me this speech, Sheriff. Get it done already, Mr. Ryder said. Very well. Seems we'll be adding grave robbing and arson to your charges, too. How deranged do you have to be? James, cuff him up. With pleasure, sir. Sheriff, wasn't he supposed to have a kid with him? That's right. Where's your little accomplice, Daryl? What the hell are you talking about? You had a kid with you in Horstead. Folks reported as much. Helped you rob the unwary bartender and... Oh, that little runt? I kidnapped him and made him do those things. Ran off when I stole that horse, though. Mr. Ryder paused. He seemed to have a hard time saying the words. Stupid thing. Couldn't be bothered to catch the kid. But I'd do it just to slap him a list. No one steals from me. Maybe wanted to shout out how it wasn't true. Mr. Ryder glanced at the burning church. Maybe stayed quiet. Well, another crime on your list don't bother me, but we're gonna have to order more paper at the office. Haul him off, man. This is a capture for the history books. James, get the brigade out here and put out this fire. The rest of you are with me. Yes, sir. Mr. Ryder was packed onto a horse, and the lawman rode off. Maybe he had only been Mr. Ryder's apprentice for a few days, and yet already missed him like a father. What could be done? Something had to be done, didn't it? Maybe stepped from the church and stared out towards the town. The riders left the ruined place behind, and so did Maybe.
the world was full of terrors. But today, Maybe had learned that those terrors could be conquered. There were no other ghost wranglers left now. Only Maybe. Thank you for listening to Whisperwood Stories. If you enjoyed this series, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe down below. Do you have a story that you'd like me to read here? Consider commenting or sending it to whisperwoodsubmissions at gmail.com. The story in this video was read with the author's permission. Indeed. Thank you again for listening to this series. If you made it this far, well done. Want to support me? Check the link below where you can leave a tip if you wish or get early access to all the stories I write here. And remember, don't let the shadows get too close. Good night, partner. And now I lose you the past, I still die in my heart, and there is nothing to do, apologize. Every shot that I give you again in my mind, and the shirt also fell in my heart. Thank you.